Jane and Lynch are ugly, their faces are ugly, their personalities are ugly, their actions are ugly, and to carry on that theme, the game is ugly too. In a brave move, IO Entertainment have tried to make their game stand out by giving the visuals a lo-fi, grainy handheld home video style. I'm sure this was an attempt to give it a gritty, hard-edged realism to suck the gamer into the character's dark and bitter world. Unfortunately, it does none of these things. What it does do is piss you off, at best make you go cross-eyed from time to time and at worst it's migraine inducing. The camera shake as you run makes you seasick and the way the exposure changes and the camera glitches and gains up sometimes makes it hard to see and the handheld leaning makes it difficult to aim, leading to you spraying bullets and a blind hope to hit something. This is all meant to add to its excitement, creating a constant feeling of desperation and chaos. So much so, even the cameraman is trying to keep his head down. I do believe the developers should be given a pat on the back for trying something different, in an attempt to add another layer to it. Ultimately, in creating something that's entirely cosmetic, that fails so entirely, they've actually made the game worse to play. This perhaps wouldn't matter if we cared about the characters involved, our attachment to them and empathy with their situation should excite us when they're in jeopardy, without the need for bouncy camera work and grainy visuals, but unfortunately we don't get attached or empathise with them. Alright, Kane has a daughter who he's got a rocky relationship with because he's a criminal, but he needs to do one last job so he can look after her. And Lynch has a girlfriend called Sue, who he cares about because he tells us he does. Come on, quiet off. Where is she? <laughs> Help me! Lynch! Help me! Shit! It's Sue! But really, these story points are given very short shrift. Because I think they thought this would take too much time away from shooting policemen in the face. And again, that's the problem. The game has no pace except a million miles an hour. The player has no time to reflect. And sure, for a short time, it's exciting being under a constant hail of fire. But once this is the norm, it eventually just becomes dull. Mercifully though, we don't have to endure this for too long, as the game is so short that you could easily clock the single player in a day. But yay, we've got multiplayer, and thankfully, this is half decent with online co-op a new addition from its predecessor. It makes the single player campaign a bit more bearable than playing on your own and the team games are much superior than the single player, mainly because you actually have an objective other than just shooting everyone that you come across. Go somewhere, pick up some loot and then get to the chopper! Against the clock of course, whilst under the threat of betrayal from your teammates and death by the police. This gameplay mechanic is so much better than the single player why and ever it didn't occur to anyone that they should perhaps fit some of these devices into the actual game, I'll never know. But at least the multiplayer goes some way to fix the crimes that the single player commits. And in spite of the cover system being slightly clunky and frustrating at times, the frantic nature of the gunfights does raise the heart rate at times. If only they'd spent the time on the gameplay, story and characters, rather than an attempt to create an arty video look, the game could have been much, much better. Yeah!